When it comes to modern day animals that dominate ecosystems, reptiles don't usually come to mind. This makes a lot of sense as all major land masses are dominated by either mammals or birds and it has been this way since the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Although this statement is definitely true for the Holocene version of Earth, it is a falsehood for the rest of prehistory and a common misconception. As since the non-avian dinosaurs, plenty of ecosystems have seen reptiles dominate both herbivorous and carnivorous niches. Probably one of the most famous examples and among the most recent is a Pleistocene Australian lizard which lived just 40 to 50,000 years ago. And this lizard was the size of some non-avian dinosaurs. Commonly known as Megalania, these giant lizards have been known about for a long time as the earliest remains were uncovered in Queensland in 1859 with several vertebrae belonging to a gigantic animal. This massive monitor lizard was described under the name Megalania priscus which roughly translates to ancient great Roma. However, this binomial name is no longer considered valid as Megalania is now grouped together with members in the genus Varanus, containing several monitor lizard species. The binomial name was changed in 2004 to Varanus priscus and Megalania is now considered a common name rather than a species name. The exact phylogeny of Varanus priscus or Megalania has seen debate over the past decades with earlier studies grouping the species with the Parenti, which is Australia's largest current monitor lizard. This would make sense as Megalania lived in a similar outback environment in the same range and the two are in the same family, so this is a pretty logical assumption. However, despite these similarities, more recent evidence suggests that Megalania is in fact closer to the Komodo dragons, which are Earth's largest non-snake lizards alive today. This may seem strange at first, as Komodo dragons live on a few small Indonesian islands hundreds of kilometres from Australia, but this can be explained by the Komodo dragon's historic range, which extended into northern Australia, which 50,000 years ago was attached to the Komodo Islands, explaining how they got to Australia slash the Komodo Islands, depending on where they originated. For the most part, Megalania has been reconstructed looking very similar to Komodo dragons being essentially a scaled up version, or maybe sometimes with a slightly different patterning in the skin, but that's just a minor difference. And one similarity between the two species could have potentially been the venom that they killed prey with. Originally, it was believed that monitor lizards like Komodo dragons, and by extension Megalania itself, had loads of bacteria in its saliva, which when it bites prey would cause infection in their bloodstream, and eventually the bacteria would cause a compromised immune system. Or However, more recent studies have proven that instead of super infectious saliva and bacteria, Komodo dragons have a mild form of venom, which causes the prey to slowly bleed out due to a lack of blood clots and the blood loss induces shock. If Megalania was anything like its modern day insular relatives, it would have been a venomous predator of mega herbivores, killing them with a mild form of venom by slowly letting them bleed out once they've bitten them. Not only was Megalania likely venomous, but it was also enormous. Nowadays, Komodo dragons can attain lengths of up to 313 centimetres or 10 feet 3 inches, with the heaviest specimen verified weighing in at 166 kilograms. Compared to what Megalania could achieve though, this size was laughable, with the average Megalania individual reaching anywhere from 3.45 to 5.5 metres rivaling the length of an average saltwater crocodile. 
Of course, we don't know the exact size of these lizards, as a complete skeleton has never been found. So plenty of size estimates are simply scaled up from Komodo dragons, so take each estimate with a grain of salt. The maximum size of Megalania is also disputed, with estimates as low as 4.5 metres to as high as 7 metres, which if true would make it longer than any crocodile and the majority of large snakes. Mass estimates for Megalania also range wildly, from as little as 97 kilograms to as much as 1.9 tonnes. A huge range. Of course, one of the major drawbacks to Megalania's size was its running speed. As a 2009 publication estimated that Megalania could only run about 10 kilometres per hour maximum compared to the modern-day Komodo Dragon's maximum of 20 kilometres per hour, meaning you could probably outrun Megalania pretty easily. Megalania lived throughout Australia during the middle to the late Pleistocene epoch 1.5 million years ago to 50,000 years ago. This monitor lizard would have lived in a wide range of environments, from open Australian forests to woodlands to grasslands and even possibly the outback in the central Australian parts. Megalania lived throughout Australia during the middle to the late Pleistocene epoch 1.5 million years ago to 50,000 years ago. This monitor lizard would have lived in a wide range of environments from open Across its range, this species would have coexisted with many other Australian megafauna, including the largest marsupial ever, Diprotodon. Diprotodon optatum is an extinct relative of koalas and wombats, which went extinct roughly 40,000 years ago. These animals were mega herbivores, growing to about three and a half tons in weight, rivaling even the largest herbivores alive today, including both rhinoceros and hippopotamus. They may have been the preferred prey of Megalania, as they were large, slow-moving herbivores, even if it would have been a bit more risky given how aggressive modern-day herbivores are. Another gigantic prey item for Megalania was the close relative of the protodon, Zygomaturus. Zygomaturus wasn't quite as large as the protodon, though it was still pretty large, reaching up to 700 kilograms. It is believed to have been semi-aquatic, similar to a hippopotamus. There were also giant kangaroos, including those of the short face variety, like Procoptodon and Sethanurus. Neither of which could hop, though both of whom were still massive, reaching three metres in total height. Although Megalania almost certainly had plenty of prey in good times, it also likely had plenty of competition. For example, there were both the so-called marsupial lion, Thylacolio, and the terrestrial crocodilian Quincana, both of whom would have hunted similar animals to Megalania. Despite Thylacolio being a better climber and Quinn Carter being a faster runner on land, Megalania was likely not under any serious threat from either of them as an adult, given their superior size and mildly venomous bite. It's unknown exactly what happened to all of this megafaunal diversity, but we do know that it started to dwindle towards the late Pleistocene coinciding with the arrival of early Indigenous humans arriving in Australia 65,000 years ago and changes in the climate. Of it's possible that humans wiping out Megalania's prey, coupled with the increasing seasonality of the climate and weather, led to the extinction of Megalania, along with the extinction of all other Australian Indigenous megafauna who all disappeared at the beginning of an event known as the Quaternary Megafaunal Extinction Event. The Quaternary Megafaunal Extinction Event started 50,000 years ago and ended 10,000 years ago, and it was an event that saw global megafaunal populations experience a decrease in density and diversity, with Megalania, along with most of Australia's megafauna, being just a few of the many casualties of this extinction. 
Don't get it twisted. Australia is still hell on earth compared to essentially everywhere else. But with the extinctions of Megalania, Thylacolio, Queen Kana, and the local Komodo dragons, it's at least less severe in the Mega Predator department. And we can probably thank the Indigenous Australians and the climate for that. Don't get